On reading, uh, um, they, they are they're synonymous. They can't be divided apart. So Abby and I were talking a little bit about some of our memories of mom and reading. One of the um, first things that I remember her telling me about reading was that she remembers as a child the blackouts that they would have in her town. And she would take her book and her flashlight and she would go into the closet, close the door, and wait out the blackout with her book <laughs> and her flashlight. And then by the time she was in high school, she was, as mentioned, reading her the entire library in her small town. Um, and then Abby and I came along, and so she had two captive audiences for helping us uh, not only learn to read, but learn to love to read. And she did that in a number of ways. She had us in the library, she had us here for the read aloud, she had us in you know, the, um, the book clubs, the summer, you know, the summer book clubs, and we were reading in the summer, of course. And um, when Jane Wakeland was the media director in the elementary school, mom read all of the new books that the library at the elementary school bought. As they came into the library, she just read every single one of them, one at a time. And you would, I would come home to visit, and there would be a stack of books by her bed like this. And she would just start at the top and read her way down. So, um, I, and then once she retired, of course, the reading didn't stop. But she said to me once, she said, you know, I thought I would have more time to read in retirement. <laughs> and I said, well, you could stop doing something that you do, and then you'd have more time. And she said, no, I don't want to stop doing anything. I just want more time to read. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure however much time she'd have had, it would have been what she considered enough. She'd have always wanted more time. One thing also that I thought of, um, I remember as a kid when mom would be reading, she'd be over in her, her rocking chair that belonged to my great-grandfather, and she'd be reading. And you could be across the room from her. Mom, still reading. Mother, still reading. Mrs. Lawson, Rita, and usually it ended up with a tap on the shoulder. Mom, oh, and you know, it's the first time she realized you were even in the room. So she definitely loved to read. Um, Abby and I were also talking about how she always seemed to know just the book for you. At least for Abby, she was able to do that, or she knew us pretty well. So um, she introduced me to four books that I remember in particular. One was um, two were fantasy. One was the Phantom Folu, fabulous book, children's book, fabulous. Um, the other fantasy book was Chicks and Chain Mail. I loved that one. That was great. Um, then there was another in the closet in the best Christmas pageant ever, and the best Christmas pageant ever. You know, I read that book in the Herdman's there, those kids. I was like, oh my gosh, it had all those kids in school. <laughs> and so, yeah, so reading was always fun. And as we mentioned, Mom's favorite was science fiction fantasy. But I think her favorite, favorite of that genre were the children's books. And she introduced me to Susan Cooper's books, the Dark Horizon series. Madeline Lingle, she loved Madeline Lingle. One of the things I found just the other day when I was looking through the obituary for Madeline Lingle that had been in the newspaper, Mom had cut it out and put it in a, a file. Um, but I think her favorite author was Lloyd Alexander. She loved Lloyd Alexander in that Black Cauldron series. I think that was maybe her favorite. Um, the, the stories of the young man, um, Taryn, in, um, who is a uh, pig keeper, and his companions. Um, and I've read them since she died. I hadn't read them before she died, but I found hers, and I've read them since she died, and I have to admit they are fabulous, fabulous books. I guess um, I would sum up mom in reading by saying that she loved to read herself, and she loved to help other people love to read. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, certainly happy to see so many good folks here from, from the community. And, uh, you know, every January, they uh, elect the new officers of the board. And one of the qualifications is obvious that 
when you become president of the board, you don't have to have great oratory skills. So. <laughs> Those will not be on display here this afternoon. <laughs> now, on behalf of the, uh, of the Board of Directors for the Culver Union Township Public Library, we thank ever so much the, the Lawson family for this wonderful collection. We're going to be, and we should be, the envy of, of the Indiana libraries with this wonderful collection. Thank you ever so much. This is exciting. I just can't tell you how exciting this is. I've known Rita for a long time, and we got together because of words. I was typing, I was re writing words, and I had to get them typed, and my, my classroom was next door to Latham's. Actually, we were back to back, and Latham was loud, and he wouldn't be so loud, I would hear him in my classroom. And so I couldn't stand right there by the wall like everybody else had done in that classroom. I had to move my desk to the other side of the room so that Latham wouldn't be heard in my classroom. And after a couple of days of this, I went down the hall to meet Mr. Lawson and said, Mr. Lawson, you talk too loudly and you need to soften up because you just over talked me. <laughs> and next thing you know, we were friends. <laughs> and so we would stand out in the hallway during the time that we were supervising students and I would tell him, you know, I'm working on my master's degree and I'm working on the thesis and I've got all these words written and I wish that I had somebody that could type them. And you know, he said, well, I bet my wife might help you out there. She's a stay-at-home mom, and she'd probably like to pick up a, a little extra money by having somebody to ask her to type for, and that's how I met Rita. And they lived over on College Avenue, and I took my little car and went over there with my clutter of words, my manuscript, and I met Rita. And she looked through it, and because she's a very well-organized person, she said, Oh, sure, I think we can make heads and tails of this and come back day after tomorrow and I should have it ready for you. And I did, and it was in a readable form, and I was able to go through and edit it. And I would say that when I got my master's degree, she deserved some of that credit because my thesis was in good shape and I had no problems because of that. And that was the beginning of the friendship. And we were friends, mostly through Latham, for many years, until probably in the 70s. And she got involved in the Teachers Association. And she needed a vice president. And I certainly didn't want to be secretary or treasurer, but I could be a vice president, because, you know, that's kind of fun. You don't have to be the main man. You get to just tag along. And the next thing I knew, I was taking along after Rita, going to school board meetings. Every month, two meetings a month, Rita and I was there at the school board meetings, learning what was going on, being the watchdogs. And we talked a lot, you know, we, we talked about teacher things. And she was a passionate, passionate teacher. And we got so that the school board expected us to be there. And if we were absent, they said, well, where were you two? You didn't come. We waited to start the meeting because we thought you were going to come. <laughs> and Bob Robertson, I bet you remember that, don't you? <laughs> that was the day. And so when we went along, I want you to know that Rita is older than I am. <laughs> Her birthday is in September. And my birthday isn't until November. <laughs> so, hey, she was older than me. And that meant when we finally worked our way up the seniority list, I was never the oldest teacher in the school corporation. <laughs> Rita was always the oldest teacher in the school corporation. And I decided I needed to retire the same year she did. Because if I didn't, that meant I was going to be the oldest teacher in the school corporation, and I certainly didn't want that. And then Rita and I was concerned after we retired, how were we going to continue our relationship? Because 
we didn't have school board meetings to go to anymore. And the, the usual things that we would see each other with school just wasn't happening. And we devised a plan. Thursday. Thursday was our plan. And every Thursday, almost without exception, we got together and did something. And we always said, we're going shopping. And people would say to us, don't you ever get tired of shopping? Isn't it expensive to go shopping? But the secret was we didn't spend a whole lot of money, and most times we ended up at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> and what does that tell you? We're back to words again. Well, your mom spent a lot of money. I mostly was the tag along. We had fantastic conversations during those years. So that lasted, you know, about eight years when we would just go out on a Thursday morning, and if our husbands wanted to come along, we always thought of some reason why they couldn't. <laughs> Very fortunately, they both joined Kiwanis, and Kiwanis met on Thursday, and that was part of the reason, I can not wait for my husband to know that, part of the reason we chose Thursday, because we knew our husbands were busy. And during those times, we really became best friends. That's when it happened, because we shared everything. And I really, really miss it.